Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family. We've taken to you so strong, it's clear we're going to get along. 34 years and that's the best you can do. Join me and Jack Wilde on Portsmouth tonight at 5.30. Come on, give it back. Give it back. All right then. Welcome back. Well, as I was saying uh, before the break, if you're older than, what, 25, or even if you're younger than 25, you're bound to know the classic musical Oliver. And if you do, you'll know that Mark Lester's forever going to be Oliver. And my guest today is forever going to be the Artful Dodger, Jack Wilde. Jack, thanks very much for coming in. Yeah, you're welcome. We say that. Is it a pain being remembered as the Artful Dodger 34 years on? Uh, I must admit, at, at the beginning, uh, say for the first couple of years, uh, I was beginning to get sort of fed up with it. But then, looking back on it, I mean, I was so lucky to be in the right place at the right time, to be allowed, or privileged, if you like, to, to be able to play the part. Which be is because it is a classic, isn't it? You get those, you've got your Ben Hurs, you've got all these classic films, and Oliver is up there. It's one of those, it's just never going to date. No, and, and the other thing, but with it being written by Dickens, who is an, obviously an incredible storyteller, um, you only get the chance once in your career to play a character as charismatic and as good as uh, Dodger. But talk about what you're doing now in just a little while, but we've, we've got to ask about it. What were you doing when you got the part as uh, the Dodger? I, I'd actually been in the business for two years. I'd done the stage show in London and I'd done lots of TV and like uh, everybody else, uh, young upcoming actors of the time, everybody and their grandmother went for the auditions for Oliver and uh, I was lucky enough to, you know, after a series of like five or six auditions um, to actually get the part. So how old were you then? I was then 14, right. but, but it took a whole year to film, including rehearsals for the dance sequences and all that. But it was so much fun from start to finish. Yeah. You know, it was very, very happy memories And for six me. Oscars. Did you go over to LA for the, the Oscars? Oh, sure. Thing? I went for the Oscar um, ceremony and all that, because I was nominated as Best Supporting Actor. And um, although I Who won that that year? It was Jack Albertson. Never heard of him. A fabulous actor. And he actually came up to me three years later when I was doing the movie at Universal in Hollywood and actually apologised for winning. Did he? Because he thought I should have won it. And I thought that was so lovely. And this man who was in his early 60s then, I don't know whether he's still alive, but he was a lovely, lovely man and yeah. a fabulous actor as well. You mentioned that. Uh, it's great to see you here, especially because I thought you were dead. I mean, things went a bit rock and roll <laughs> after that, didn't they? <laughs> they did go a bit rock and roll. And also, you're not the only person because, like, in Japan, lots of people in Japan thought I was dead and actually printed it in magazines and newspapers and all that. But I'm a survivor, and although, you know, I've only got myself to blame for the problems that I had, um, I just thank God that I overcame them all. And I've been 13 years sober, and I'm as fit as I ever have been now. Yeah, well, I mean, we were saying that flippantly, that uh, we never went as far as printing it in the newspapers. But we say things did go rock and roll, because you were 14, 15 years old when the film came out. And suddenly you had all this fame, and I suppose fortune to go with it. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, looking back on it, it's insane because as a 15 year old, I had uh, my own uh, TV series in Hollywood, I had a million dollar contract for that, I had a million dollar contract for making records and albums, and so on paper, I was a millionaire, but obviously, because these contracts never necessarily last the length of time that I didn't earn that amount of money but sure yeah I did earn a lot but I also spent a lot as well. What were you spending on? Was it just the booze? No, no it wasn't because mainly I, I was brought up to uh, be, be very strong in my belief of my family and what have you. Um, my family had as big a share of my money as what I did. Right, and, so you're you know, just I bought hand. everybody a, a car, and I bought houses, and all this, that, and the other. 
So that was in 1968 when Oliver came out. <coughs> How long did this rock and roll lifestyle last before you suddenly said, hey, listen, this is enough, I'm killing myself, I've got to do something about it? Um, it must have lasted about 13, 14 years. That's a and good run. Oh, it is. And, and, you know, I'm not exactly big in size. So, I, you know, I really did get to the point where I didn't think my body could take much more. And what made you change? Was there anything it in particular? It was bad, really, because I did go initially to a drying out clinic and it just wasn't my time to give up. You know, they say that you've got to get to your bottom line first. Yeah. And I obviously hadn't gotten to it then. But um, a few years later, I'd, I met some people at a Christian meeting without sort of boring anybody. But, um, and these people had what I wanted, but they'd gone through the same problem that I was having at that time. And so I thought, well, if they can do it, why can't I? And I put my mind to it, and um, I, I literally, in my opinion, was cured overnight. Brilliant. Well, the, the good thing is you're still here and you're still doing it. We should say you're in Portsmouth doing the Lavender Hill Mob, which is a classic Ealing comedy, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a fan of the old Ealing uh, comedies, as you say, and this one has been so well adapted for the stage. Um, Clive Francis, who's in it, uh, wrote and directed it as well. And we've got Victor Spinetti, Michael Melia, myself, and Claire Harding, and a couple of other people as well in it. And um, there's only eight in the whole cast, and we're having a lot of fun with it. It really is a great show. It's fabulous family entertainment. And that's running all this week, Monday through till Saturday at the King's Theatre. That's right, yeah, and we've got a matinee on Saturday, obviously. Uh, and you've been to the King's Theatre before, haven't you? Yeah, I have, but, but this was in my, you know, drinking day, so I don't remember, don't remember too much <laughs> about it. But, um, yeah, that was uh, in the mid-70s when I was last playing in Southsea. But, I mean, the theatre is such a gorgeous place. Yeah. You know, it's, and I mean, the audience last night thoroughly enjoyed it, so as, as they have done for the last five weeks. And so another classic film, The Lavender Hill Mob, I mean, that starred Alec Guinness, Peter Sellers. Whose character do you play? I play um, Alfie Bassey's oh, character, yeah. and I, I did work with Alfie um, in the 70s. I also worked with Stanley Holloway, who was in the original film. And it translates to stage all right, no problems there? Very, very well, yeah. It really is a fun show to do. We're, we're having a ball. Great. Well, listen, thanks so much for coming in, and the best of luck with that, because it, it's a great play, and it's good to see you fit and well again. Like you say, you're a survivor, so, so keep doing it. And uh, the King's Theatre in South Sea all this week, Monday to Friday, the Lavender Hill Mob, with Jack Wilde. Thanks Cheers, very much, mate. Jack.